In 1978, Star Wars action figures were the holler toys in stores, as kids was buying them all up after waiting almost a year for them to be released. As they flew off toy shelves, Kenner was hard at work on Series 2 to be in stores by early 1979. They had their working list. More aliens, more droids, as that seems what kids really loved. But toy designer Rory Hinckley, who had a huge hit a few years before with Mattel's toy-based TV star woman Kitty O'Neill doll, Kenner had taken him away from Mattel, and he had new plans for a Series 2 that didn't really fit in with what Kenner was trying to do. Sure, he agreed with Kenner on more aliens, a Luke Skywalker to help sell the X-Wing fighter, and more droids, but Rory felt the line should have more than just what we saw on screen. First, he came up with four figures, all based on the novel Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Two of those four figures would be heroes we know, Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. Lucasfilm was even on board, feeling he could boost sales to the already hit novel. However, Kenner didn't feel that strong about it, feeling the novel was aimed more for older Star Wars fans and kids just wouldn't want to play with toys based on a book they never read. Lucasfilm and Kenner went head to head, but finally Kenner won out. Rory wasn't ready just to give up for his plans for Series 2 line, as he knew he could bring more to the line than Kenner was offering. So he came up with a plan to go straight to Lucasfilms, bypassing the bosses at Kenner. Getting close to running out of time to have figures approved, Rory set up a meeting with the head of merchandising at Lucasfilm, Ted the Teddy Bear Logan. Rory's new plan was a figure not based on anything seen in Star Wars, or even a Star Wars novel. In fact, it was more of a behind-the-scenes toy. Rory wanted to honor the god of Star Wars, George Lucas. He felt over the past year, kids knew Lucas just as much as they knew R2-D2, Han Solo, or even Luke Skywalker. He wanted Kenner to release a George Lucas action figure, but he knew Kenner wouldn't do it unless pressure came down from Lucasfilm. Logan loved the prototype of Lucas and told him, Go to Kenner, tell them this will be the next Mellowway figure and it will be released in retail stores by the end of 1979. Rory couldn't believe it. Finally, someone else was seeing his vision for Star Wars. He headed back to Kenner with his prototype and sketches in hand. Back at Lucasfilm, Logan called for a meeting with George Lucas himself with the excellent news that he would be an action figure in the new Star Wars line. At the time, Lucas was on vacation in Hawaii and wasn't all that happy to be called away from his beachfront rental. On the phone, he said to Logan, you got three minutes and this better be good. Back in Cincinnati, Rory's plane landed and he headed to the Kenner office with the demand. Arriving at the front door of the building, he was met by Kenner's CEO, Barry Loomis, and two guards. Loomis told him to hand over the sketches and the prototype, and after doing so, he was told he wasn't allowed to return to the building, and if he came back, he would be arrested for trespassing. Rory was in shock. He was the toy designer of the year. He even had Lucasfilm approving the new toy, and now he was fired and kicked out. Back in Los Angeles, Logan was getting his own chewing out. Over the phone by George Lucas, who had been yelling at him for 15 minutes about how bad it would be to make a figure based on him. Logan couldn't recall much of what was said on the phone, but he did say he heard a lot of four-letter words and a lot of screaming. At the end of the phone call, Lucas ended by yelling two words, You're fired! George Lucas was so angry, he called up Kenner's CEO himself to tell him what was going on, and how if they made a George Lucas action figure, or even if sketches of the plans got out to the public, he would buy Kenner himself and close it down. Toy designer Rory Hinckley found himself out of a job and being blacklisted by most toy companies. However, he would find work with the small rack toy company Laramie. There, one of his rack toys would get the eye of Mattel's Barry the Bean Larson. Barry's daughter had bought the Fonz Viewer toy, and Barry was very impressed with it. He called for a meeting with Roy, and after some cocktails, heard the story of how George Lucas had been so upset with him and got him fired from Kenner. Barry would hire him on the spot with one request. Roy would head up the Fisher Price Adventure People figure design team, and his first job was to take that George Lucas figure plan and make it into a Fisher Price Adventure person action figure. Roy loved it and thought it would be a great way to give the middle finger to not only Kenner but Lucasfilm. But he was kind of worried being that Kenner did own the sketches and the prototype, so Roy had to make a few changes. In 1981, Fisher Price would release an action figure in their Adventure People line of an old man with white hair and a white beard named Space Commander, who is without a doubt an old man version of the planned George Lucas action figure. Sadly, the action figure sold poorly, and it was known as the figure that tanked the Fisher Price line. Roy was fired yet again, and Barry the Bean Larson was forced to take an early retirement. Barry would pass away of a massive heart attack two years later. 
As for Rory Hinckley, he moved on from the toy company business and found new success and fame as a designer for the very popular 80s jacket, Members Only. In a 1988 interview, Rory said that he got the name, Members Only, as that's how he felt about the toy company market. That it was a Members Only club and he wasn't a part of it because he wouldn't play ball. Sadly, in 1995, Roy would pass away after a hang glider mishap near Lake Erie. Kenner, now under Hasbro, would release a Robin action figure with a hang glider as a way to honor the former toy designer. However, some felt it was just their way of giving the middle finger to Roy one last time. Well, that's a look at the time how Kenner almost made a George Lucas action figure. I want to thank you for watching, and as always, check out some of my other videos, like these other April Fool videos seen in here. Hey, jump man <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs> <laughs>